overflows. Osho and past lives. Life is far bigger than birth and death. Abhi to kuch keh lene do. Abhi to kuch keh lene do. Jeevan to hai ek anant kahani. Jeevan to hai ek anant kahani. Aviram shanti man ki lehron si. Aviram shant man ki lehron si. Abhi to kuch keh lene do. Prathvi hai lakhon varsh purani. Prathvi hai lakhon varsh purani. Aur buddhon ki vani. Har pal man veena ke taar jan karati. Aur buddhon ki vani har pal. Manvina ke taar jan karati. Abhi to kuch keh lene do. Abhi to kuch keh lene do. Vani amrat ke geet gun gunati. Vani amrat ke geet gun gunati. Par jeevan banjaro ka dera. पर जीवन बंजारों का डेरा आज यहाँ कल कहाँ हो जाना आज यहाँ कल कहाँ हो जाना अभी तो कुछ कह लेने दो तन की अपनी सीमाएं हैं तन की अपनी सीमाएं हैं कब वाणी को विराम मिले कब वाणी को विराम मिले जीवन सूक्ष्म हो अनंत में विलीन जीवन सूक्ष्म में हो अनंत में विलीन अभी तो कुछ कह लेने दो अभी तो कुछ कह ले बॉर्न ऑन इलेवेंथ ऑफ डिसम्बर नाइनटीन थर्टी वन ओशो अटेन्ड एन लाइटमेंट ऑन ट्वेंटी थर्ड ऑफ मार्च नाइनटीन फिफ्टी थ्री and entered into the cosmic womb on 19th of January 1990. He explains the past life, the moment child is born, you think is the beginning of its life. That is not true. The moment an old man dies, you think is the end of his life. It is not so. Life is far bigger than birth and death, beyond birth and death both. Birth and death are not two ends of life. Many births, many deaths happen within life. Life itself has no beginning, no end. Life and in eternity are equivalent synonyms. Life begins at the point of your past life's death. When you die on one side, one chapter of life with people think was your whole life is closed. It was only a chapter in a book which has infinite chapters. One chapter closes, but the book is not closed. Just turn the page and another chapter begins. The person dying starts visualizing his next life. This is a known fact because it happens before the chapter closes. Buddha had a word for it. He calls it tanha. Literally, tanha means desires, but metaphorically, it means the whole life of desires. All these things happen. Frustration, fulfillment, disappointments, successes, failures, but all have happened within a certain area that you call desire. The dying man has to see the whole of it before he moves on further just to recollect it because the body is going, this mind is not going to be with him, the brain is not going to be with him, what the desire release from the mind will cling to his soul and this desire will decide his future life. Whatever has remained unfulfilled he will move towards that target. Your life begins far back before your birth. 
before your mother's impregnation, further back in your past life's ends, that end is the beginning of this life. One chapter closes, another chapter opens. Now, how this new life will be is 99% determined by the last moment of your death. Just as when you are sleeping, the last thought in your mind becomes the first thought when you wake up in the morning. What you collected, what you have brought with you like a seed, that seed will become a tree. You cannot read it in the seed form. The seed has the whole blueprint. If a man dies fully alert, seeing the whole terrain that he has passed and seeing the whole stupidity of it, he is born with a sharpness, with an intelligent unmatched, with a courage. Automatically, this is not something he does, but this is the way the existence works. There are six great religions in the world. They can be classified, divided into two categories. One category of Judaism, Christianity and Islam. They believe only in one life. You are just between birth and death. There is nothing beyond birth and death. Life is whole. Although they believe in heaven and hell and God, and they are earning from one life, they are the earnings from one life, a single life. The other category consists of Hinduism, Jainism and Buddhism. They believe in the theory of reincarnation. One is born again and again, eternally, unless one becomes enlightened. And then the wheel stops. I have meditated. I have come to a point where I can see my own past lives. And that is proof enough. It is my knowing, my experience. It is nothing to do with Indian heritage, belief or anything else. I speak on my own authority. I began as an intellectual, not only in this life, but in many lives. My whole work in many lives has been concerned with intellect, refining the intellect, sharpening the intellect. I have known so many esoteric groups in this life and before. I have been in contact with many of those esoteric groups, but I cannot tell you their whereabouts. I cannot tell you their names because that is not permitted. It is a secret. And it is of no use really, but I can tell you they still exist. They will try to help you they try to help the seekers in one way or the other. And sometimes when you feel you are being mysteriously helped, it is these esoteric groups that help you. And the master is aware of this. I know Bodhi Dharma personally. I traveled with the man for at least three months. He loved me just as I loved him. He will be curious to know why he you will be curious to know why he loved me. He loved me because I never asked him any question. He said to me, you are the first person, person I have met who does not ask a question. And I only get bored with all the questions. You are the only person who does not bore me. I said, there is a reason for it. And he said, what is that? I said, I only answer. I never question. If you have any question, you can ask me. If you don't have a question, don't have any question, then keep your mouth shut. We both laughed. Such was the magnanimity of Osho. Fearless, he could talk to anyone and he did not say the Holy Buddha, Holy Bodhi Dharma or this straight away when two people are at the same level of consciousness, they 
address themselves with an intimate personal names. We both laughed because we both belonged to the same category of insanity. He asked me to continue the journey with him, but I said, excuse me, I have to go my way and from this point it separates from yours. He could not believe it. He had never invited anyone before. This was the man who had refused even Emperor Wu, the greatest emperor of China in those days, with great, with greatest empire, as if he was a beggar. Bodhidharma could not believe his eyes that I could refuse him. I said, now you know how it feels to be refused. I wanted to give you a taste of it. Goodbye. But that was 14 centuries ago. Bodhidharma, the mystic who was born thousand years after the Gautam Buddha and who brought Bodhi, Buddhism from India to China. And thus he laid the foundation of the Chan in China that became Zen in Japan and there he waited for nine years for the man who he has come for, we name. Bodhidharma remained facing the wall and he waited. Then one day a man came, he said, Bodhidharma, turn your face towards me. Turn your face towards me. Otherwise I will cut off my hand. Bodhidharma said, that will not work. Then after some time, he said, turn your face towards me, otherwise I will cut off my head. Bodhidharma turned the face towards him and he said, that will work. The two are symbolic, hence represents the actions and mind represents the conditionings. Transformation can happen only when your conditionings are dropped. There is no more con conditionings. Your life is not conditioned by any dogma, belief, philosophy or anything. Osho was one such mystic on the spiritual horizon of India. Enough for now. Osho Sharnam Gachami. Osho Sharnam Gachami. Osho Sharnam Gachami. Born on 11th of December 1931 in a Jain family, attained enlightenment on 23rd of March 1953 at the age of 21, entered into Mahasamadhi at his own will on 19th of January 1990. Enough for now. Talks on Osho overflows on Osho will continue enough for today.